and uh, I'm happy today because um, we are going to make uh, this webinar uh, to introduce our new compu our computational method for electronic company. Um, today we are going to go over three uh, types of calculations. One is for electron transfer, and then we are going to go for uh, excitation energy transfer for both singlet and triplet systems. So for the electron transfer problems, um, the, our targeted problems are, for example, you have a pair of molecules in one excess charge, which is maybe an electron or a hole, maybe moving through to, from one to the other. And this what we think is maybe a ground state situation. Or you may have an excited state situation where these pattern rose molecules, you absorb a photon in the donor, and then charge is transferred to the acceptor fragment. So we are going to discuss about computational method to address the electronic coupling in both cases. And the second type of problem, energy transfer, the first one we are going to talk about is single energy transfer. For example, you have a excitation donor and a citation acceptor. They may or may not be linked by a, a linker, linker here. And then you can see that the fluorescence would uh, be moved to the acceptor once the energy transfer becomes efficient. And the third type of problem is called triple energy transfer. It, it is energy transfer, but now involves a spin a change in the donor and receptor fragments. So it's, it is more like an exchange process. And uh, you can see that uh, people are using that in the design of their light emitting material. And uh, it also plays some role in the, form, in the uh, 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 protection, because um, formation of triple growth field is dangerous, and the chronoing may be able to help to quench such dangerous species. <clears throat> so uh, today I'm going to talk about the method to calculate electron transfer and energy transfer coupling. Uh, I would like to include some short description on the theory and the method, and then we will go over comp real computational examples or test jobs. Um, and we'll focus on the use of these methods instead of the scientific conclusion in the past that we have drawn from these methods. Okay. So the 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 general theory uh, I'm going to lay out is here. So this is mainly a two-state problem in electron or energy transfer. Um, the initial state, you may have an excess electron or some excess excitation. So the configuration of the donor is different from the end of the state. So this, this little dot indicates some excess electron or excess energy, and that electron energy is transferred to the end. So this, there's an electronic configuration in the initial state, and there's a different uh, electron configuration in, at the final state. So th this process, is it involves a change in the electronic state. Um, and the, the initial and final electronic state are coupled. Namely, they are not supposed to be the eigenstate of your system. And this is what we call the diabetic state. And the, these states, um, the, 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 the rate of uh, transferring, there, are, there exist a the theories for those the such reaction rates. Uh, for example, the simplest one being the golden rule rate, and uh, one characteristic is you can see that uh, the rate of constant is proportional to the electronic coupling, amplitude squared. Just to name one example, in the field of electron transfer, of course, you can name the Marcus theory. And it is derived based on the golden rule concept. Again, you see this um, important amplitude squared for the electronic coupling. And of course, the free energy change and another important parameter called reorganization energy are both involved in the rate. But these are not the focus of today's talk. Instead, we are going to tell you our, our method, which can allow you to calculate this electronic coupling vector. Um, so again, it uh, is often phrased as a two-state problem. So again, let me name these states more properly and tell you what do we mean in are these two states. Okay, so again, let's focus on electron transfer first. Otherwise, the terminology will be a little confusing. So we will have a reactant state alone, moving along a reaction code, and it may have some 
uh, uh, door inlet doors the Akimo structure here in the Parnas state may have a uh, different lowest the uh, energy structure okay and when they cross this is what the people what we call transition state right and in these two state problems since these two states are not the ideal state they will couple to each other you will see avoided crossing if you project it to the eigen state okay so if we zoom in at the crossing or the transition stage you can see that the diabetic state the reactant and product state the state where charge remains where it is are these dashed or dotted blue lines here okay because when you move around the region coordinate the energy will just go straight up in this line or go straight down but when you if you diagonalize your Hamiltonian, electronic Hamiltonian, then you will find adiabatic state or eigen state. And with your process and you state, the, the character of this state from will, will go from something that is very close to real reactant state to a half F mixture and then to something that is very close to real product state here. Okay. So these two two uh, kinds of state description is what we are going to stick to, namely the diabetic state or the eigen state. They are different uh, in our space. So then we can come to this question. How do you really calculate an off diagonal metric element? Uh, in the in the uh, diabetic state or reactant product state space, this is pretty general. You can imagine that you have two guys in Hamiltonian um, <clears throat> with your energy here and your coupling here. So the eigenvalue can be obtained by simply a direct diagonalization of this. For example, you can just manually diagonalize it, and here are your eigenvalues. Okay? So let's keep this model in our mind. So the first strategy I'm going to talk about is simply to take the eigenstate energy. For example, if you can set up your calculation in a condition where this term goes to zero, then the energy gap of these two eigenvalues will become twice decoupling because you are crossing minus here. Okay? And then the second strategy I'm going to talk about is a direct coupling scheme that we can you can obtain some charge localized solution, usually uh, unrestricted Hausdorff fog, and you pretend that these are the diabetic state, namely the R and P states here. Okay? So I'll give you a little more details also. In the third strategy um, in today's talk, we'll be referring to using, you, you define an operator and use that operator to define the charge localized state. So, so this is another situation where we try to use the eigen state and then we construct the local charge localized or excitation localized diabetic state. So just an overview. In the past we have, um, explored all the three different situations and try to think about what are the strategies um, that you can use to calculate these coverings. Some of them exist in the literature and some of them we compare or even we got a chance to improve them. Um, for energy transfer, we kind of learn from electron transfer and apply these methods. So all of the methods I'm going to discuss are going to discuss about today. But I'm not going to tell you too much about our scientific conclusion presented in those work. Because for those of you who are interested, you can surely discuss with me or go ahead and take a look. Okay? So let me go to the first part, which is about electron transfer concrete. And uh, the first uh, case I'm going to tell you is we let's try to think about calculating electron transfer concrete using energy gaps. So there is one way, one very simple way to use the energy gap, which is uh, we basically one electron property. So let me introduce uh, this one electron energy first. So in the typical and simplest possible calculation in in QCAM, it is um, Hartree-Fock calculation. It is made, I can call it entry level uh, quantum chemistry calculation. Um, in the Hartree-Fock model, the many electron ground state wave function is described by a Slater determinant. Inside that Slater determinant are many electron orbitals. And these orbitals are basically one electron wave functions 
present and while all other electrons are in their mean field. Um, the, so in this theory, there's a Kupferman's theorem. It says the ionization potential equals to the negative value of your hormone energy. Um, of course, there are some assumptions. For example, in this case, um, we assume that the orbital does not relax, remains the same in ionization. Okay. Okay. So, okay. The, so we want to make use of Kupferman theorem and to 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 solve the, the to calculate the energy trans uh, electron transfer coupling. So here I'm showing an example where you have two ethylene. So the double bond is here, and the plane of the molecule is perpendicular to the screen you are viewing. So the pi electrons are here. So using Kruppen theorem, we can infer their cationic state energy. Um, so we put a place of ethylene face to face, and uh, we want to calculate the hole transfer coupling, which we will imagine that initially there's a positive charge, and the final state is the positive charge goes to the other ethylene. Um, so, the key is to perform a partial calculation for the dimer in the neutral closed shell form. Now we use the Kupferman theorem to infer the energy for a cation radical. Um, the one of them is we, we think that the whole the electron. So that's that's the dimer of the molecular configuration. So the first one is you take the electron out from the homomance one, or you can take the electron out from the homo. So the energy difference of these two configuration will be the energy difference of these two homo orbital if you use Kuhn theorem. So then that means that you do a comparable calculation, obtain the homo energy, take the first two homo if they turn out to be symmetric and anti-symmetric pair. Then you take energy, have energy gap of them. Okay? Very simple. And we can do the same thing for the electron transfer. Now we are imagining that we have a pair of ethylene with a negative charge here, and the later on it transferred to the, neg the negative charge transferred to the other fragment. And of course, we need to tweak uh, the Kuhn theorem a little bit. Now we want to look at the LUMO of a neutral pair calculation. If you take the energy gap of a LUMO and LUMO plus one, and hopefully they, then you can check that they have, that again, they need to be a symmetric and anti-symmetric pair. And if that's the case, then you take energy difference of these two HOMO, and take half of that value, gives you, again, the coupling. And I want to remind you, so this will be very, very nice, and uh, a very nice way to calculate coupling. The computational cost will be very low. You just need a, a, a ground state crucial calculation. And the important criteria is that you have you must make sure the ER and EP are the same. So for example, if they are the two molecules are symmetry, they are mutually equivalent under the same symmetry, then for sure you can argue that this has to be zero and energy gap directly uh, is derived from energy gap. For molecules, even if they are chemically identical. Uh, but they are not mutually equivalent. Then, um, then the molecules seen, uh, this molecule is under a different uh, interaction uh, from the other molecule, then you don't have this condition. So we would, I would suggest you to use a small electric field until, uh, to, to pull the energy difference until a minimal energy gap is obtained. And when minimal energy gap is obtained, you, you have this criteria already. Okay. Um, let's look at one simple example, but this is a symmetric case. So this is for Kuhn theorem. So you have mutual reference, the molecules are identical. In this case, okay. Uh, usually we suggest you to view the MO you pick. They have to be symmetric and anti-symmetric. Um, so these are these are two acetin, and you just simply do very basic calculation in choosing your orbital. And I would suggest you to print out uh, some molecular orbital energies, and uh, as an output. So after you enter QCAM, and uh, the output will be SCF converged, and the MO is printed. Okay. So let's take a look. This is the system. 
with 16 pairs. So that means that this is HOMO, HOMO minus 1, or LUMO, LUMO minus 1. So you take energy difference of these two, divide that by 2, gives you whole transfer, and energy difference of these two, divide that by 2, that gives you electron transfer. Okay. All right, so the second part of method that I'm going to tell you is what we call direct coupling. So direct coupling, we try to obtain some, oh, this is, I'm sorry, this has to be charge localized. And then we, we try to obtain some charge localized solution. And even though the system may be symmetric, but we want symmetry for the solution. OK, for example, again, this line represents the, the entity you are viewing at. Again, the molecular plane is perpendicular to the screen. And you may have the pi orbital and the two pi star orbital. And the pi orbitals, for example, you can have them in a way uh, you, if you localize them, then one will be mostly populated in one fragment and the other pi orbital is mostly populated in the other fragment. All right? So in the reactant state, you can now we calculate uh, the, the system with, for example, one excess electron. So the initial state describes that the, the, the molecule at the right is negatively charged. And that energy, that electron will move to the molecule to the left which is the product configuration, you can see. The electron that the molecule can have, uh, the, the, the localized molecule to the left is populated. OK? So this is one set of, how to, uh, for example, unrestricted Hausdorff solution. And this is another unrestricted Hausdorff solution. Um, so out of these two calculations, you can obtain these to enrichment Hartree-Fock solution, and you can calculate. We can calculate their Hamiltonian metric element, and since they are not orthogonal, we need their overlap coupling. Okay, so then we assume that the eigenfunction are assumed to be the linear combination of these two, and again we assume that we have a symmetric and anti-symmetric linear combination of these two. When we assume that, again, half energy gap can be derived, which is given here. And that is uh, the model for our coupling. So direct coupling calculated this result out of HRP and SRP and E0 values. And uh, in our mind, we are assuming the symmetry restored solution from symmetry broken configurations. OK? So. When, when you want to use the direct coupling, the system does not need to be symmetrical anymore. You don't really need to scan for the lowest, en the, the en lowest energy splitting either. And uh, we typically just use a ground state and retreat half triple solution. The direct wave functions um, can be uh, obtained because now we are talking about charge localized, right? And sometimes it is not easy to get. So, we basically offer two methods in Jupyter. One is you can separate the donor and acceptor and calculate them separately in their in the Hartree fork. For example, you can calculate a donor negative, donor anion, and acceptor neutral, and then try to combine this solution for the reactant. And then calculate again donor neutral, acceptor cation, and combine them again for the product. And the, using these combination, we call them one plus one in the manual. You can refer to this section, or I'm going to show you some example. Uh, the second strategy is uh, try to do whatever you can. You can use one plus one. You can use other method. You just need the charge localized the initial gas. Then you can find the, try to find the charge localized uh, Hartree flow. This is basically relaxed. Mainly the whatever whatever charge localized solution are properly as it's going through a self-consistent field calculation and then we plug in the direct coupling approach. All right, so let's see some examples. So first example is here. So the intersection is a little different. Um, this is what we call one plus one. Um, 
you need to specify the overall charge and then spin multiplicity here. So appear to be a anion radical. And each prime one is one as an So we give them here. Um, and uh, their initial and final state charge and spin multiplicity. Charge, spin multiplicity are given. Okay, and the final state, and then the, the, the other fragment, initial state, final state. All right. So to start the direct coupling calculation, then you need to turn this TSDC true, and uh, we, it is necessary to use a, a symmetry ignore. Um, these um, keywords have to be used. And uh, let's go on to the result. Actually, I should have said from the beginning. Okay, so you have, or well, this is our input sections. Now you can see this. No, it's telling you that you have self consistent field calculation for the first fragment and uh, in state one. And then on the second fragment, so on so forth. You, you are going to see four of such. State, state two, first fragment. You can take a closer look at the result also. Okay? State two, second fragment. Okay. Then finally, we do calculate the Hamiltonian and S and the also energy value, so on and so forth. And then we obtain this third coupling here. Okay, if you want the relaxed output, it is uh, uh, the input is. Oh, okay. Here we use one plus one as R, which which is usually available. So we use uh, one plus one as our initial gas, but now we need the relaxed calculation. And the output is again the same. You have uh, the two fragment in the two state which are skipped, but now the calculation is relaxed, which means that uh, the you have the fifth calculation which let me go from the back. Which involves a SCF. Of the initial and final state, you see two of them. And then this is the effective coupling at the end. Okay. All right. So the third strategy is uh, electron transfer that we use an additional operator to define the diabetic states. For example, maybe a dipole operator. So to begin with, this a little um, the, the motivation is we hope to be able to treat the excited state um, electron transfer problems. And you can be photo-induced. So you go to an excited state and then electron transfer happens. Or um, the, we can also want to treat optical electron transfer, where you observe a photon and you switch to you jump to a charge separated state. Okay, so in the literature for optical electron transfer, there's a Monica Hoosh expression, which I would call empirical or experimental value. Why? Because uh, they take the charge transfer band in the absorption spectrum. The charge transfer band usually is a diffuse, broad, and lowly intense the band in the absorption spectrum in the, low, in the lowest energy area. And the height, weight, and intensity of this band, uh, plug in, if, if you plug in this uh, expression, that gives you the Monica Hoosh estimate for the electronic copy. What I'm going to tell you about is the generalized Monica Hoosh method, which was published by Marshall Newton and Bob Kev in 1996. And and this is a set of very nice methods. Now, instead of synthesizing the molecule and take their spectrum, um, you can just simply do a vertical excitation, obtain their eigenstate. Then you maybe I can obtain their eigenstate and also have their eigenstate dipole moment matrix. Generally, these metrics are not diagonal. Um, so, assuming that you take two of such states, or you are, that is pretty close to your initial and final state, then we ask this question. I need the linear, uh, if I can just take a linear combination of these two states to form my charge localized diabetic state. 
how how would I form that linear combination? Okay, so in this linear combination, I would, this type of operator can help. If we assume that the charge are so localized, such that the type of operator have zero of the alcohol match element, there will be one criteria, and that criteria will be sufficient to determine the, the linear combination. So once the linear combination is defined, then you can turn the same uh, diagonal Hamiltonian to a not the not the diagonal uh, undiagonalized uh, uh, matrix, and this VRP is what we want. And this expression is directly obtained. Okay. So later, uh, Wojciech uh, uh, attained uh, a variant based on similar philosophy, and this is called fragment charge difference. Uh, simply because in 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 QCAM, uh, you can calculate in, instead of dipole, you can actually directly obtain where the electrons are. You can actually calculate how many electrons you get in certain region, right? So so FCD says you can define a donor region and define a septal region, and let's count their charges, and then just let's just make sure that uh, such a delta Q matrix will be zero at the charge localized space. Again, a two by two state problem. Um, if you know how to do this linear transformation, we don't. We know how to obtain these problems. And then again, you obtain very similar expression. Except now we have delta Q operator. Here. Um, here I'm going to tell you a little example we went through, and these are a set of heterogeneous molecules I show you, which they worked on a long time ago. Um, this is the the, the Napsalin donor, and when excited, the energy will transfer to the acceptor. And this rigid linker provides a, a bridge effect. Um, and they found that uh, the energy transfer rate will be exponentially decay. Um, Generalized molecule hoosh will sometimes overestimate the coupling value. And it is quite often, especially if you are using CIS, actually. Um, because at that time, at that point, uh, the CT charge transfer stage and energy can be too high. Uh, one of the reasons, very simply, is because we typically calculate the molecules in the vacuum. And so the charge separation, uh, you have a large core of energy to add up, which may not be there when your real molecules are in the, in, in the, in the solvent. So this highly excited CT state is not good because it may contain a small piece of locally excited component. Once you have that local excited component, then the transition dipoles can be too large. Okay, so there are two ways to solve these problems. So this is what we saw when we first we first tried using CIS. Suppose the initial use experimental yield findings on initial decay, but we found that uh, the the dependence on the number of sigma bound if you take a log scale. They are not in a, in, a, in a straight line. Okay, this molecule is, if you are is even larger than a short term molecule. And uh, you see some large basis state dependence also. So, one method is you just call, you just use a solar model. Okay, um, for example, we try to use the simplest possible solar model we, we, as we can and try to not increase it and computate in the cost. So we can basically use the, the image charge approximation. This image charge approximation can be found in, I'm sorry, oh, it's hard to see here. So it, it's found in a Friedman's uh, molecular physics uh, paper. And uh, it assumes that the molecule is embedded inside a spherical cavity. So you need point charges. The point in charge, the point charges can be Mulligan charge or it can be other type of localization charge, and you place an image charge according to the expression they give in the paper. And it is the dielectric solvent is simplified by these image charges outside the cavity. So in the QCAM, you, if you, when you figure out where and how large these charges are, you just make a separate section with each charge included, and it is a very simple way to implement. And it helps. Uh, the values, common values, go all the way down. Um, well, another way is to try FCD. 
The CD is less sensitive to a small locally excited component since it does not contribute to the beta Q. So once this is excited, um, it does not contribute to the charge difference. In the operator is what I mean here. And uh, uh, the other hand, on the other hand, you do need to define the dominant sector region. So here I'm showing you that it really, in general, it doesn't really affect where you cut the molecule. Okay, so so you can try also FCD, and uh, we can tell you that doing FCD maybe maybe the, the result may be a little more robust than GMH. Okay, so again, GMH and FCD are both based on excited state calculation. In FCD, you need to define atoms that belongs to donor and belong to the acceptor. So you need to make sure that your donor and acceptor are to, uh, grouped together in your input. Okay, assignment uh, for the two states that's relevant to the electron transfer problem. That will be one important task for the user. So you need to figure out which are the two electronic states that are involved in the uh, electronic problem. So when very often we offer you the delta Q value and that will be sufficient. Okay, so I'll show you an example, but you need to watch the delta Q nature elements, especially the diagonal ones, and those are the, your important clue. Um, also, I want to warn you that you may have to go and view the homo lumo or the attachment detachment plots or the natural transition orbital plots. And uh, these information are also going to help you to judge is whether this is the, 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 the that the state is the, what you want. So let's see one example jump here. Let's see. Um, here. Okay. So here, this time we are trying a small different case. This is acetylene and uh, methanemian cation. Okay, this is a system where people calculated it before. Um, these are the molecules. It is a cation. It, car it carries uh, uh, the, the spin multiplicity is one. And uh, okay, we, now we are still looking at vertical excitation, so we need to turn on CIS. Um, we we are going to be interested in singlet states. Okay. So um, this time we instead this in the default setting is use molecular population, but you can also set on the same job but not use back heat back population and back population. You have to use this keyword. Uh, most of other things are the same. Oh, the donor and receptor have to be specified. And 1 to 6 means that atom number 1 to atom number 6. 7 to 12, again, atom number 7 to atom number 12. All right? And we can include both CM, GMH and FCD in one calculation. Or you can just do one of them. OK? So the output is here. Again, we start from the beginning. and. Uh, the system to ground state convergence, and it goes to a steady state, and you find all these eigenstates in the CIS calculation. Here is the FCD calculation. You have the donor charge and the sector charge and their different charge. These are including nuclear charges, OK? Otherwise, uh, you have many negative charges. OK, and then the same thing. This is ground state, and these are for the 12 excited state. Again, donor charge is a good charge. You see, the ground state, the donor carries one positive charge, and the center is nearly zero. So, you want to look for a state where the donor is nearly zero and the center is nearly one. You can find it here, basically. And then the dq will be two or minus two, depending on which way you subtract it, right? So, this is basically zero to one, is basically what we wanted to look at. And uh, FCD calculation, um, 
because we cannot predict which Tuesday you want, so we basically give you everything. So this section tells you zero to all the 12 calculation complete, but the only meaningful number to you will be this one. You see? Okay? Um, and uh, these are the metric elements for the delta Q matrix. Okay? Uh, if you want to look at excited states to excited state covering, we also give you all the possible combinations here depending on your assignment, so which I'm not going to go through. You can do, we can do the same thing for GMH, and this, the, the result is similar. You have double moment for the ground state and double moment, permanent double moment for the excited state. Now we have uh, transition table calculated and then calculate the GMH. The coupling value is this one. All right. And you have all other exciting states to excite the coupling. But unless they are of electron transfer characteristic, these values doesn't mean much. Okay? Unless you do have an electron transfer. Otherwise, these values are simply some calculated value. So now we know these are electron transfer pairs. We know this value is their corresponding coupling. Okay? All right, let's go enter the energy transfer routine, the part. The energy transfer part, we have spin conserve singular part and a spin uh, exchange part. The spin cons conserve part, the coupling is, is just in any system we can see, included uh, FRAT or light harvesting. Um, and the coupling includes uh, the coolant coupling, which what people call double double coupling. It also has some short range effect, like exchange and overlap. In the spin exchange part, you can see, for example, chlorophyll coupling, triple quenching. Um, these involve some exchange coupling, and overlay effect is also there. Okay. So the energy transfer coupling can be obtained again by the three different strategies. One uh, for energy gap. It's the same that the coupling, if you try to obtain the true state energy, then um, have energy gap may give you coupling. And this will be particularly useful for your triple state. Okay. Um, single state is also possible, and people do that also. Um, so the the part, the, 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 the good part of this approach is it is eigenvalue based, but the, the problem is most very often you need a uh, steady state calculation, which is a little more costly, but it is generally possible. But the problem is, this strategy is mostly uh, available for symmetric system only, for uh, especially for large systems that are asymmetric. For example, chromium, chromium, and chlorophyll. Adjusting the energy level is hard. There is no general way of doing it. Okay. So again, even that, it is still some possible method if your system allows you. So let's look at some examples. So again, if you have a symmetric system and you don't need to worry about the asymmetric problem, then we can calculate both singlet and triplet energy gap. Okay. So we start from a singlet constant reference, and the two molecules are their structure as mentioned, and the energy gap uh, of the first two singlet or triplet sign state should be twice the singlet energy transfer or triplet energy transfer Um one should, uh, as a final note, one should check the symmetry of the two states you pick. It should be, again, an asymmetric and asymmetric combination of the monomeric states. All right? So, these are the output. We have this input included here. And the uh, ground state converged. CIS excited state obtained. Okay? So, for example, these are those two triple states. Then we can take your energy difference and then form the coupling. So how do we know these two are the correct ones? Again, you need to analyze it by using homo um, or NTOs. And uh, you can look at the single state. Let's see. Are here. Again, they form a pair. Um, 
how do we know? Actually, you can see the signs and the orbital involved. Okay. So it's nice and easy. All right. So the same strategy, direct coupling. Direct coupling in our co in the QCAMS code only work for two uh, state. That's uh, this whole Hamiltonian way. So it's very similar to what I just told you for electron transfer, but now you want to start with spin localized state. Okay, so we treat those spin localized state as ground state, uh, triplet ground state. And if you do the do two set of calculation and spin localized in different fragments. Now we can collect them and calculate their Hamiltonian measurement and the uh, overlap. Again, the good part is this, these are not ground state method. So the, these are low cost ground state method. But the problem is that it is not always possible to obtain spin localized state for both. Um, your potential problem is when you, tr it is possible to do some asymmetric system. But when you have asymmetric system, maybe one fragment is easier to have spinning localized. And it may be hard to obtain a state with the spin localized to the other fragments. Um, but when it is possible, then the direct coupling gives you the coupling as a result. Again, the idea is um, a linear combination of these two spin localized states give you a symmetry restored uh, eigenstate model. And again, now you have our favorite ethylene example then. Um, the triple state can be in the reactant or in the triple state can be in the product. And in the, in the, in the left hand molecule or in the right hand molecule, they form the antenna quantum state. Okay? So. Okay, and the direct coupling can be obtained. Um, one nice thing to look at uh, the coupling result is to get a look at the systematic result of uh, distant dependence. In this case, we are pulling away this D and then trying to see whether you should approach, whether you can obtain the exponential decay. And this exponential decay indicates that, uh, and also if, with smaller basis that you see the tail uh, of the Gaussian wave function, the effect of these tails start to show up. But the larger the basis that you get, uh, you, you get a, large, uh, a better exponential decay. That's in the, pretty much indicate the value we get is pretty much a, a physical solution. And the typical slope of these triple energy transfer is, is two point something per angstrom. So this is twice as much as that for electron transfer as well. Uh, and you can compare the same system with uh, the energy transfer half energy gap result. And uh, we, we, when, when we obtain this result, we are really happy because we obtain very similar results derived from two different methodology. And these two methods are made, made a different physical assumption, right? And we assume that coupling value, uh, we make different assumptions to obtain this coupling value. And that means that we have some consistency among these theories. Okay? So if you want to use direct coupling for a triple energy transfer, the system it does not need to be symmetric, but you do need to get ground state and restricting Hasselhoff solution. Again, okay, one plus one method works. It's easier to make it work, and you just need the donor and receptor fragment, one in triplet and one in ground state, one in triplet and the other in ground state, and combine this solution. It is actually perhaps the easiest way to obtain. And again, one plus one in the manual. You can use spin localized initial gas and then find the spin localized solution. You can use that this one plus one as the initial gas and try to find the relaxed result. Again, a warning is that relaxed result is not always possible because what, even though you may start from the donor triplet initial gas and that, that triplet spin may again, move to the sector after this realization. Okay, so it may or may not work. But one plus one is perhaps the one we will recommend uh, for most cases. Again, time for some examples. So we should see. I'm 
I'm sorry. Okay. I'm talking about triplet say, and the molecule can be ground state singlet or ground state triplet or ground state triplet singlet. Okay, make sure that this is initial and this is your final state configuration. And uh, again, turn on DC. It's pretty much the same as you would do for your zone center. Okay, and uh, sometimes it is necessary to include basis set uh, overlap error, uh, superposition error, and uh, you could have your set turn up. Okay, and uh, here are the results. Okay, you will see four set of calculation, but let me skip it. Okay, again, you see for the video, but let me skip everything until the end. And just to tell you that, um, you can calculate the concrete and the treatment and here you are, okay? Well, energy transfer, it was a sign if people sometimes, instead of calculating the full Hamiltonian value, you can calculate the coolant and exchange coupling, especially for the single energy transfer. Actually, in the literature, the early energy transfer work. Most of the time, people calculate the exchange coupling also. What are they? Um, they, are, they are the components in the, in the coupling. So for example, the single case, could they are, if you dissect this Hamiltonian contribution, you can have a Cooler integral, okay, and that most of the literature is from the literature reported, and it is also approximated as a Foster's double level coupling. It can be easily calculated, and it is believed that this is a dominating type. And in in QK, you can do this. So um, if you the theory behind is if you do a first order expansion, the single energy transfer coupling can be dissected. And the coolant term is basically a collection of coolant to electron integrals. And the exchange term is, uh, again, a set of two electron integrals, but now it's electron exchange considered. And uh, we can set up QCAM to calculate both of the terms. Again, coolant for singlet, exchange for both singlet and triplet. And here I'm talking about uh, transition density, so it's a ground state and side state product projected to one particle density matrix. Okay, cheaper, you don't have this, you can calculate this. Okay. So the in each calculation, it's like one plus one. The excitation and the transition density are obtained separately for donor and sector fragments. Um, the donor and already the, the coolant and the exchange companies are then calculated using the building to electron integral required routines. This is good because uh, the, the computational efficiency is high and the, the numerical precision is very good. And coolant coupling often serves as a good approximation for singular carbon uh, coupling. But I want to warn you for those of you who want to use exchange coupling for triplet because it is less consistent in our past observation. So even though you can calculate exchange coupling, but to use that as a representation for triple energy transfer, well, I, I doubt. I think that they have less correlation. Okay, but anyhow, let's see how we can calculate this. So these are coolant exchange. We have look at single first. Okay. So we have one plus one calculation, but now you have one fragment. You have a donor acceptor. Um, the STS DC now turn to trans. Trans means you use transition density in DC. Okay? And uh, again, you have symmetry ignore, some cleanup, some result, PSSE. You need to say donor and the acceptor. Oh, no, no, no. You need to say donor and scepter. Uh, how many size that you want to calculate? Okay? And how many roots you want to get? You can get more roots and calculate less coupling. And now we focus on single. So, 
So um, we separate to calculate one fragment from the other and obtain the 12 excited state. This is our 12 excited state. And the second one again, then quickly go over. And then after the result, then we start, we start the job and then try to calculate uh, the current exchange properly. Now we have donor state 1 to 6, the center state 1 to 6. So if you want to take one to the first donor first excited to donor first excited state, the current covering will be here and the uh, exchange here. And that will therefore supposed to be an approximate value for donor is here. All right? So these are basically the results. If you want to look at the triplet, I believe I we have it um, up here. Again, pretty much the same. But now we turn on the triple state instead. Okay, one to six, one to six. Um, again, the CRS calculation twice for the donut is that the Now you don't have current coupling, you only have exchange coupling. And these are the triple triple exchange with coupling value. All right. Now, finally, we have energy transfer. Now we have a third class of method I want to introduce you. Again, we use some specialized operator. And these are, one is for single and the other is many developed for triplet. So, again, let's go back to GMH and FCD. GMH uses a double operator, FCD uses a charge difference operator. Both are used to define your transfer class state so that you can obtain the off down measurement. Right? So our idea was that now that you can do this, when you come up with a spin population or excitation population, you can do the same thing. Um, it turns out that for the excitation, it is possible because we can try to define a delta x operator. What is that? Delta x operator, we, we try to define an excitation density. Um, in this case, we are using um, the detachment density and the attachment density. Detachment density is what you can imagine is that the whole density created in an excitation. And the whole excitation density is, you can imagine that this is the electron density created in an excitation. So we took these two and then take uh, the donor and the septal region, uh, uh, which we just take these two and, and turn that into positive quantity and sum them up. And uh, we can divide the donor in the septal region and calculate their uh, electron difference, okay, and population difference. And this will give us uh, delta x, which we can plug in here. Again, we can define the similar qualities for similar quantity for the transition part, and then we can obtain this. The transition part here, okay. And we can do the same for the speed. Spin is pretty similar, it's the difference between alpha spin and beta spin fragments, and then we can obtain the same. So these two schemes are very similar and can be used to its general either inter or intramolecular systems. It it need to use with an excited state calculation. So and then every time it takes two eigenstates to compose the diabetic states. Again, the proper the proper assignment is important. Um, and this is, since now we are transforming the uh, full Hamiltonian, the total covering values according to the Hamiltonian you use in your calculation is obtained. We know that um, if you okay, this is one little note. Um, if you if you start with a uh, spin restricted, which most of those uh, molecules uh, are are with, then FED and FCD are, are technically equivalent. Okay, so the formulation of SCD is more general. So since you can work with spin unrestricted states, but with spin restricted states, if you turn on FSD, actually the the problem will involve FED. Just just one simple side note. So time for some example. So let's look at FED here. Now, we no longer use to define those fragment calculations. We just treat the whole system as one. And the total, total spin and total charge 
and give and take. And uh, um, you can turn on single you can turn on triple. Okay. And uh, it is important to turn on STS LED. Now that we are spin restricted, LED gives you both single and triple. So that's good. And uh, you need to define donor and center region. So you need to group together. You need to put all your donor atoms together and the center atom together and give them a range of number. Okay. So go on stay, excited stay, let me skip. Once it is done, the program gives you this. Okay. First of all, single state properties. This is only for triple state first, okay? Because we mix the calculation, so the numbers is not a consecutive number. But all every state, what is their spin? So the first state, the triple state is on the receptor menu. And the second state, triple is on the donor. So they can form a pair of triple energy transfer. Okay. And we can focus on them. And so state one to two. You have all the x values here, and here is your complete. Okay. Again, you can do it for the single state again, which is um, again another set of twelve states. Um, we want to look at again donor acceptor, their excitation, right? So the first, the, the first single state will have your acceptor excited. The second is still more or less, a center is more excited. So we cannot look at 3, 2, 5. This is not going to be a, a pair that makes sense. Uh, instead, we should look at 3, to 6, OK? Because now the donor is excited in this state. So this will be probably the state you want, depending on the problem you have. So this is the coupling value you can report. All right. And the unit we can get, we give you is in DB. All right, here we are, almost there. Yes, finally, um, I want to thank all of you who are online viewing this program. And uh, I want to thank um, many people here. Um, it won't be possible to finish this project without uh, all of my group members. And we've got a lot of support from Athenia Zinica and the National Science Council. And we got many, very much help from QCAN community also. And also your feedback and questions always make us feel a, a lot of motivation and uh, know where to go. So I want to thank you. Okay, finally, I want to answer some questions here. So it's been asked that, um, so first of all, which method would I, re would I recommend to general users to use? Uh, now I introduce different uh, problems, electron transfer and energy transfer. Um, in electron transfer, I think it is straightforward because you we either you have ground state problem or you have excited state problem. Right? Let me go back to I'm sorry. Oops. Let me quickly go back to the very early summary here, maybe. OK. So for, for a problem with many ground state, you try to see whether you can use energy gap. Because the electron transfer, it is possible to use the electric field to pull the electron. So it really doesn't matter whether you are symmetric or not, or direct coupling. For besides that problem, I would suggest you to try GMH and FCD. Okay. For energy transfer problem, if if you, the system allows you to calculate excited state for both donor receptor everything together, then FCD, FED, the FED method or LSD method is perhaps the first one I would recommend. Just in case that you, it is not affordable, then you can probably directly calculate the current coupling uh, or calculate the direct coupling. Okay, so that is my answer. 
So what about computational cost? Again, um, if it is a ground, uh, typically those coupling doesn't add much computation effort or uh, cost. So ground state method, you can estimate it as a ground state cost. Uh, except for direct coupling, you may calculate a few ground state, but that is not a very, very bad thing to do. And the exact same method, actually the real cost you have is to have Again, donor acceptor together, everything together, and you make an exact calculation. So you want to weigh against the choice of method simply because you want to see the, uh, simply by the, the amount of calculation to obtain the state that you want. Okay? And the most of these methods, uh, the covering part doesn't really cost much. Okay, the third problem is about EFT. Well, this functional theory has been performed really well in terms of their energy. So how well do they do, they do in terms uh, of electronic coupling? That's again, that's surely is a very important question. Um, for energy transfer, especially for singlet, I don't see anything wrong if you use TDDFT for FED. Okay, so time dependent density functional theory using FED to calculate uh, the singlet transfer, I think. They should work. For triplet, I don't know yet. I've seen people working using TDDFT, but uh, but DFT does not have a real exchange uh, in, uh, functional in it. It has some effective exchange effect. And it may work too. Well, but I just wanted to mention that DFT in principle, uh, those um, commonly used functionals like b 3 lib or PBE, people like to use them, they do not describe the charge transfer states very well. So initially, you can see our, our work, uh, we avoid using DLT in our publications. But recently, we have uh, performed a series of tests over for the range corrected functional. And uh, range corrected functional can be used to describe states with charge transfer characters. Um, so how well would they do for electron transfer? And our answer is yes, they do a significant uh, improvement. So my suggestion now is that, yes, you can use DFT to calculate electron transfer as long as you are using long range corrective functional. But long range corrective functional, you need to specify the omega or the mu value, the range separating value. Um, I, we do have some strategy for it. Um, I don't. I don't have currently. I don't have a slide for it. But please just hold on. Our manuscript is in in preparation, and it should uh, be submitted any time now. Um, there, there is some good way, but and for the time being, you can just simply stick to the value people suggest for obtain a good charge transfer state, for example, for your molecule or for your system. Um, I think they won't make too much of a difference, and you can still get pretty sensible results. Of course, we do have some optimized suggestion, but I need a slide to properly explain what that is. And um, I hope that next time I'll get a chance to tell you more about it. All right? So I want to thank you all there, and I uh, hope that uh, our presentation will help you uh, in your future research work. Thank you. This concludes our webinar. We would like to thank Sherry Fu for her excellent presentation. If you've not tried QChem lately, we have come a long way, and we invite you to utilize our two-month full-feature demo, which you can request by hitting the orange free demo button on our website. Should you have any questions, please feel free to contact us by emailing either Jinping or Yi Han at the email addresses noted on your screen. We also invite you to visit us on Facebook. Thank you for your participation and see you at the next webinar.